Well, a very good evening from wherever you're watching us. This is Herman Manura's channel and you're watching The Candy Talk. Well, my name is Evan Sokini. Joining me today is none other than Professor Herman Manura, one of the most sought after political analysts in this country. Prof, how are you? Wonderful. How is the day been? Oh, good. A well, little warm today. Eh? Mm -hmm. Yes. Prof, today I would like us to focus on uh, Kiambu County gubernatorial race. And yes. you find that uh, definitely, let me just give you a brief background to this county. Well, Kiambu County is one of the richest counties in this uh, country, actually contributing uh, to the country's uh, GDP, or rather the gross domestic product of this country. And uh, you get to realize that it has got 12 sub-counties. Mm -hmm. This is the county where the president hails from and the county that hosts the first family. Definitely, it has uh, actually attracted quite a number of people who actually are eyeing the gubernatorial race. And I would like us to focus on the six aspirants who were cleared by the IABC to vie, on, to vie for the gubernatorial position in this uh, county. Well, Prof, just to mention them, we have uh, James Nyoro, who is the current governor, he's vying under Jubilee ticket. We have Kimani Wamatangi, who's been a senator there for almost 10 years, uh, who is vying there on a UDA ticket. Then there is the first governor of uh, Kiambu County, Honorable William Kabogo, who is vying under the Tujibebe wa Kenya party. There is the Gatundu South Member of Parliament, uh, Moses Kuria, Honorable, who is actually vying on a Chama Chakazi ticket. Then there is a Thika Member of Parliament, Patrick Wainaina, who is vying on an independent ticket. And finally, there is this accomplished policy expert lady, daughter of former Gidunguri senior chief Peter Gatabaki Wadakwa, and wife of uh, economist David Ndi. I'm talking about none other than uh, Mwende Gatabaki. She's actually the sixth aspirant. Now, well, Prof, the first question is this. Why this crowded race? Well, it's not unique. Many other counties have the same. Yes. But of course, like you have said in your introduction, this is a, a serious county. Yes. I think even in terms of registered voters, it is only behind uh, Nairobi and Nakuru or something. I think it's number two or number three. Yeah. High registered number of voters, mm -hmm. proximity to Nairobi, and it has everything. Uh, 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 many people would want to be governor of Kiambu, and that's why the interest. Mm -hmm. And also there are also political party interests mm -hmm. and you know coalitions interests here. Yeah. But it's not just crowded by every Tom, Dick and Harry. It is crowded by political heavyweights. Yes. Not just any other person. It has to be that way because this is Kiambu. We are not talking about some, some peripheral county. This is Kiambu. Mm -hmm. Kiambu is, I think, is only next to, to Nairobi in terms of, really, significance, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, resources, mm -hmm. in terms of even the population, uh, the, 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 the section of population that is what you can call civilized what you can call well to do i mean it is just next to nairobi okay there is no other county in the country yes yes now prof what do you think are some of the fundamental factors that will inform whoever will win the kambu county gubernatorial race unfortunately even for a county that has so many pressing issues including pressure on the land mm -hmm. one of the biggest problems facing kambu is pressure on on its land mm -hmm. to provide houses for nairobi people mm -hmm. And this means land is diminishing. Land available for agriculture is mm -hmm. diminishing by the day. Mm -hmm. It's one of the biggest problems Kiambu is facing. And yet, none of those things will, uh, will matter. Mm -hmm. They are going to look at political parties. Yes. It's, it's really about UDA. Mm -hmm. It's about Azimio. Mm -hmm. It's about personalities. It's about mm -hmm. Kafogo. Mm -hmm. It's about Moses Korea. Mm -hmm. So it's not about the issues of Kiambu. Mm -hmm. It's about either about parties or about the big names you've talked about. Mm -hmm. It's very unfortunate. Now, Prof, at the beginning I mentioned that this is the county where the president hails from. How does President Uhuru Kenyatta factor play a role in Kiambu County governor, a gubernatorial race? You know, Kenyatta died in 1978, Jomo Kenyatta, father to Uhuru Kenyatta. Yes. Left behind a widow, mother of the nation, mm -hmm. Her Excellency First Lady Mamangina Kenyatta of those days. Mm -hmm. She has kept a love profile. Mm -hmm. The Kenyatta's kept a low profile throughout the 24-year rule of Moi, except for a time when Uhuru came up at the prodding and instigation of Moi to run for elections. Mm -hmm. And they have maintained it that way. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I laud them for that. Because mm -hmm. if you have been in power and you get out of power, mm -hmm. 
you will cause a lot of anxiety if you actively get yourself involved in the politics of the country. Mm -hmm. So for the Kenyatta family, mm -hmm. getting involved in the Kiambu family, uh, politics would not be good for them or for anybody for that matter. Mm -hmm. People will feel, you know, you talk, they will see you are condescending. Mm -hmm. When you say something, people say you are saying because you are rich, because you are the first family. So you mm -hmm. better keep up, do your business. And that's why the Kenyatta have caused very little commotion either in Kiambu or in the country. And that's the way it should be. Mm -hmm. yeah. But Prof, we have Honorable James Nyoro, the current governor, who is vying on a Jubilee party ticket. And the Jubilee party is actually the president's party. So Ju can, we, can, we, can we have a situation whereby uh, people would like vote on the premises that uh, uh, this is the president's kind of candidate? No, no. They are voting for Jubilee. Mm -hmm. Jubilee, of course, is associated with Uhuru, the politician, not mm -hmm. Uhuru, the Kenyatta family. Okay. The Kenyatta family wants to keep out away from politics, which is good. Mm -hmm. And they have successfully done it. From 1978, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. Being that influential, mm -hmm. being that rich, the temptation to get involved in the politics of the country mm -hmm. or of the county, very high, but the Kenyatta's have kept up. And I, I think I say that's a good thing to do. And I don't think the voting in Kiambu County will be determined by the Kenyatta's. But they're not interested in that. Mm -hmm. They have other things, but not who becomes governor of Kiambu. It's not, uh, I may be wrong, but I don't think that's the case. But Prof, we've seen uh, uh, Patrick Wainaina Wajangol, the Thika uh, town member of parliament, pick on uh, Priscilla Nyokabi uh, as a, his running mate during this gubernatorial race. But then Nyokabi is one of the, uh, is from the Kenyatta's family. So but if the Kenyatta's wanted to have a stab, would they... Will they give their family member to a peripheral candidate like that guy? The guy is a peripheral <laughs> candidate. <laughs> they will give it to either, either Matangi or Kafogo. Those are the people with a realistic chance of winning the election. Mm -hmm. The two of them, not even in Europe. So mm -hmm. You get it? Yeah. I get you. And mm -hmm. you say Jubilee is Kenyatta. Then how can the Kenyatta's again move from Jubilee, leave Jubilee in Europe and then go to that independent candidate? I don't think the Kenyatta's are would want to have anything to do with Kiambu politics. So there is no way President Uru Kenyatta is going to influence no. anything to do with uh, politics in Kiambu County? He plays higher, mm -hmm. and he knows why. You get involved at the local level, and people will drag you in mud. Mm -hmm. yes. no. You'll have influence. If Kenyatta has wanted to influence who becomes governor, it'll be a very simple thing. Mm -hmm. But they don't want now, Prof, uh, definitely, UDA, or United Democratic Alliance Party, for that matter, isn't actually... Uh, our Central Kenya Party. Yes. Yeah, it's 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 originated all the way from uh, Eastern uh, Johnson Modama. Then it has been adopted, and uh, we've seen it infiltrating into uh, Central Kenya. What would you think would uh, to what extent can Deputy President William Ruto influence or affect the gubernatorial race in uh, Kiambu, Kiambu County? Mm -hmm. See, UDA is very strong in Mount Kenya region, not just Kiambu. Mm -hmm. And that's why people like Wamatangi have jumped onto UDA. Mm -hmm. Not because they believe in UDA. Mm -hmm. Because they know if you go to UDA, your chances of winning are extremely high. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying he will win because of that. Mm -hmm. But the chances are extremely high because you are in UDA. So it's, it, it, it doesn't translate to them being in love with UDA. Mm -hmm. And this will come clear if Raila wins. Mm -hmm. The Uhuru Raila team wins. Mm -hmm. You'll see all these people abandoning UDA and joining, mm -hmm. joining uh, Raila and Uhuru within the first three months of being elected governor on mm -hmm. UDA ticket. So they are there. UDA is the strongest party in Mount Kenya now. Mm -hmm. And uh, many people in that party expect the fa except the founders, Anwai Guru, Wamatangi, mm -hmm. fall in the category of people mm -hmm. who have gone there because they know the party is strong mm -hmm. in that area, not because they love the party. Mm -hmm. The founders, Kimani Shungo, if they tell you, you'll believe them. So meaning... Gishagwa, Gashagwa, Nindi Nyoro, Alice mm -hmm. Home. Those are the founders. Those mm -hmm. ones believe in UDA. But these are the... Johnny Kam, lately, Joy Riders, like Omatangi and Anwai Guru. Mm -hmm. Those are there because they know you are there and you are assured of victory. So meaning Senator Kimani Omatangi just went to UDA They are just even people, wave. even the voters know it's not UDA. Mm -hmm. That's why people like Moses Kuri are not happy about it. They know he's not UDA. Mm -hmm. They know he's there to win the race. Mm -hmm. And that is why if 
Kafogo wa to convince Nyoro to leave it for him. Asubuhi na mapema asatoli would say it. he would have won. Another thing which is very interesting is the migrant population that is within Kiambu County, especially in those plantations. Now, how does this migrant population actually affect the gubernatorial uh, race? It depends on where they want to vote. Yes. Uh, if there is an Azimio candidate, strongly mm -hmm. Azimio, mm -hmm. like uh, Nyoro, mm -hmm. and they target that population, they will rip. Because in the TA states and the other places and your Kali players, you know, garages and what in Thika, you know, Ruiru, in tea plantations in Ruiru, in Limuru and Tigoni area. There are many lawyers and many Luos. Mm -hmm. And these are mainly Azimio people. Mm -hmm. So, but you have to target them. Yes. I saw during the by election in Kiamba, mm -hmm. they didn't target them. If they had targeted them, they would have, they, uh, Jubilee would have won. They didn't. So sometimes our politicians don't seek advice, don't look for out for experts. That migrant population, you see, you see, Lik Nyanjui in Akuru. Yes, he knows that. That's why he's not even campaigning and he's going to win. He's tapped into the migrant population in Akuru County. You know, almost 60, 40 percent. I don't know the, but I think let me just say, a big chunk of Naivasha. Mm -hmm is people by people from Western Kenya mm -hmm. in the flower farms and so on and so forth and there are many mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and the last election people were still worried most of them rushed home in 2013 people left Nairobi and Naivasha and all those places mm -hmm. last election they were there are not quite many of them but people stayed home they were not quite sure of voting mm -hmm. this time they are going to vote yes and you'll see this Lee Kinyanjui knows that and is tapping into that because our friends there Mm -hmm. have some little interest there. Mm -hmm. If Nyoro mm -hmm. were to go for that population, mm -hmm. he will, and uh, there are not few in Kiambu. Mm -hmm. There are many. They have even raised councillors, you know, MCS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are many. There are many. Just like you can go in Kajado and find also, there are many lawyers in Kajado. If you therefore target them, you, like if you go to Kitengela and those places, there are many migrant communities who are not Kikuyu and not Maasai. Mm -hmm. If we were to believe that Maasai and Kikuyu are the owners of Kajado, I mean, in quotes, mm -hmm. you'll find many kisses, many luyas, many luos, many kambas mm -hmm. in places like Tengela. So if you target those mm -hmm. carefully, so if Nyoro were to target that population, he will, he will, he will have a, a good chunk of them to mm -hmm. boost his chances. Okay. Now that, uh, Prof, you've said that uh, the Kiambu County gubernatorial race will definitely narrow down to a Kenya Kwanzaa versus Azimio La Umoja coalition duel. Now, looking at this... But, but no, not quite that, because mm -hmm. I don't know whether Kafogo has crossed over officially to Azimio. All I know, he has left Kenya Kwanzaa. Yes. If he has moved to Azimio, if he's perceived and accepted as an Azimio candidate, mm -hmm. the next thing Uhuru and Raila would do is to ask Nyoro, who doesn't stand a chance, perhaps... Mm -hmm. to, to support Kafogo, or the other way around, mm -hmm. or even Kafogo supporting Nyoro, mm -hmm. then they will win. Yeah, now we can ask your question. Now, yeah, that, that's, that's what I was asking. Now, how will this play out? Because we have UD as a party, yeah. but there is also Kenya Kwanza, that big umbrella that is there. There is uh, uh, Moses Kuria here, then we have uh, Kimani Wamatangi, Patrick Wainaina, who actually is an independent candidate, but then is affiliated to, uh, to Kenya Kwanza. So how will this play out? Can we, do we see a situation whereby everybody who is going to vote perhaps for Kenya Kwanza would perhaps divide these votes and then the rest would vote for Nyoro? So could Governor Nyoro get it easily from that point? No, Nyoro uh -huh. and uh, I'm, I'm like a Fogo, mm -hmm. if they played as a team, they will, be, they will win very easily. Wamatangi will stand no chance. But Kafogo is also doing very well. Yeah. Nyoro has also the backing of, of Jubilee Party. Mm -hmm. And the people who are increasingly seeing Ruto attacking Uhuru, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and Nyoro may also be a beneficiary of the of the shift in Mount Kenya, mm -hmm. where there is this move towards Azimio, uh, ostensibly because of Mother Karua. Mm -hmm. So Nyoro could be a beneficiary of that, mm -hmm. and in the next three weeks that are remaining, 
18, 17 days, whatever they are, if the if if the, the, the momentum is kept of of, of the Kikuj moving mm -hmm. moving significantly towards Azimio, mm -hmm. then Nyoro could also be a beneficiary of the same. Mm -hmm. And why do you, what, what do you, what do you think are the tricks being used by one honorable Moses Kuria? Because at one point uh, they were together with uh, William Kabogo. And they were, all of them are threatening to leave uh, Kenya Kwanza. Then when Kabogo left, he remained there and still remains there up to date. I think the trick Moses Kuria would have been using is to is to to remove Kafogo mm -hmm. from the Kenya Kwanza fold, mm -hmm. so that now the people of Kiambu are having to choose between him and Omatangi, mm -hmm. and he he assumed he can uh, outsmart outstage Omatangi. But I think that's a dream. I think Moses Kuria remains a peripheral candidate who will have no impact. He will be number four. He cannot be even number three. Mm -hmm. Number one, two, three is for Kafogo, Amatangi, and Nyoro. Mm -hmm. Kuria is number four, five there. Well, there is this uh, recent opinion poll that was released by a firm by the name Nizani, which actually puts William Kabogo at the front. Yes. And then Kimani Wamatangi comes yes. second, then James Nyoro, then Wainaina Wajangle comes yes. in, Moses Kuria comes a distant yes. fifth. Yes, fifth finally, or fourth. It can't be otherwise. Uh -huh. This thing, Mo Kuria can only see it from view, Sasa, mm -hmm. as boys would tell you. It's nowhere near. But sometimes when I say these things, I say so strongly, Wajakoya <laughs> told me today, I'm a very bad man. I've said you can't get it, you know. <laughs> but this is how, this is our work. Yes. It's our trade. Mm -hmm. We sometimes make honest assessments. We could be wrong. Mm -hmm. You should celebrate when we, are, when we are wrong, if you are Wajakoya. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same. Mm -hmm. Prof, going yeah. by what I've just said about that opinion poll that puts actually William Kavogo at the forefront, do you think that can translate into votes and do you perhaps smell victory for William Kafogo? Kafogo can. Kafa Kafogo. Yeah, he can. Kafogo, you know to remove Kafogo, it took a lot of propaganda. Mm -hmm. A lot of serious propaganda and a wongo mingi. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's so rich, he can, he can use his money to cook gideri and women can line like Matiti Yaumba. It, it, nobody would have been in Kafogo. How could Wamatai Nani? Babayao beat Kafogo. There was no way he could beat. But, 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 but Babayao trounced worked. him with over 500,000. That's what I'm votes. saying. It uh -huh. took what I'm saying. Uh -huh. Ukora Iyo. Falsehoods. So strong. That's why I'm only trying to tell you that Kafogo is still a strong candidate in Kiambu. Uh -huh. He has strong roots. Uh -huh. He has connections and networks. He has the money. He has many things going for him. Uh -huh. And he is convincing. Uh -huh. You get it? Yeah. So he's a strong candidate. He can win. Mm -hmm. So I was just saying, if Nyoro and Gafogo mm -hmm. realize that if they both remain in, they give Omatangi a chance, mm -hmm. one of them should live for the other. Okay. I mean, now you could have thought you can win. But if you are getting 20%, 18%, and other guys are getting 40 35 38 mm -hmm. it's too late for you to change now. You can quickly give for the other and they win. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you so much, Prof, for making it uh, time to attend to the candid talk. Well, allow me to wrap up the conversation at this point, but please don't fail to subscribe to our channel so that we may get uh, to inform you of all that is taking place around this country and bring you the latest political analysis of each and everything that is going on. Kindly subscribe and please comment so that we get to know which county would you like us to cover next. Thank you so much. I've been your host, Evans Okini. <laughs>